whenever Apple will ever release a product, the expectations are very high. There were a huge number of rumors and fantastic expectations. Now, what did we really get and what were we thinking we'll get? That's how we're going to analyze it in a very, very different manner. So first, what did Apple give us? what they should have given us as per what the competition has. That's first. And then our bloggers and analysts will tell us, is this now the Apple iPhone 5, the best smartphone in the world? You can love it. You can hate it. But you just can't ignore it. This may not be the Apple of everyone's eyes. But in the whole of last week, all eyes were set on this one device. The rumors had been floating around for a long time. The expectations were huge. The iPhone 5 was unveiled amidst much hype, anxiety and excitement. Would this 6th generation iPhone be worth all that? Would this be the jaw-dropping gadget that people just couldn't wait to get their hands on? The slimmest iPhone ever at just 7.6mm, this may well be 18% thinner and 20% lighter than the iPhone 4S, but it is not the slimmest smartphone ever. The Huawei Ascend P1S measures just 6.68mm at its thinnest point. Another Chinese manufacturer, little known Oppo Finder, is in fact just 6.65mm thin. The Samsung Galaxy Note 2 has a 5.5 inch screen, the Nokia Lumia 920 has a 4.5 inch screen, the HTC One X has a 4.7 inch screen and the iPhone 5 a 4 inch screen. After all the anticipation and hope of a large screen on the iPhone, all we got is a slightly stretched version of the iPhone 4S. In addition to the expected features, I was hoping for a fresher design uh, from the new iPhone. Um, but then again, as Apple rarely does a, a revolutionary update, we've seen an evolution of the design. They stretched it out with a larger screen. A bigger display for sure, uh, better battery and 4G LTE, uh, and probably a better camera. Um, and Apple has delivered on most of those fronts. It has a smaller yet faster 8MP EyeSight camera that can snap 40% faster than the earlier generation. A panorama mode has also been included on the phone. FaceTime fans rejoice! HD front camera 1.2MP but this brings it at power with the competition. In fact, with the likes of the HTC One X and the Nokia Pure View that the iPhone is pitted against, Apple should have really had at least one killer add-on. The iPhone 5 has moved to 4G, but this is of little relevance to us in India as it will be on a different spectrum that won't be supported here. Many other features of iOS 6 like maps, navigation, local search, traffic information will not be supported in India, at least in the initial months of the release. Again, maps is something that will not be great in India, which is a huge problem. Hopefully Google will launch their own uh, Google Maps for iOS. Uh, so there are disadvantages and advantages with it, just like any other phone. But I don't think it is the phone to get anymore. Uh, at the most, I'd say I'm interested in what the camera has to bring, but uh, I'm not sure it will be anything uh, revolutionary as such. So it's not really the iPhone 5, but it's iOS 6, which I think uh, is a little more exciting. You know, a simple feature like being able to reject a call or to answer a call with uh, an SMS has been even in the dumb phones for many years and Apple is only introducing it now. So I think that's a, that's a positive sign. We were waiting to be awed by one feature that blew the socks off any other smartphone. Could it be wireless charging? NFC? Perhaps Bluetooth 4.0? Nope, none of it. This time we were surprised that we weren't surprised. Last time we had Siri which uh at least to some people made a big difference. So I thought there would be some uh, something that nobody's ever thought of uh, yet that would really be exciting and there wasn't. This time around there wasn't something to wow us. There wasn't something revolutionary from in the new iPhone. So yeah, I would say a little bit of disappointment is definitely there. Again, Apple is competing with Apple in this case because there's so much hype over their products that they can never possibly meet them. Um, just like with the iPhone 4 and the 4S, th there's the same amount of overhype that happened this time too. So I guess there were a couple of people who were disappointed. Um, I thought it was okay. I don't think I'll be buying the iPhone 5. I think it's a very nice phone, but I'll have to see a little bit more about it before. Though some thought otherwise. What is there to be disappointed? It's better than the iPhone 4S in every respect. You know, you get a bit of bigger screen a processor that's twice as fast as the iPhone 4S. Um, a camera that is slightly improved um, and uh, everything you know even the design the the looks and the entire finishing of the product so it, Apple has actually delivered a very very great product it's a bigger screen it's uh, it's got LTE 
Oh, it's yeah, it's a little longer than uh, the other phone. It, it's all there. On Twitter too, there were mixed opinions. Karthik Bhatt says felt disappointed. Do we miss Steve Jobs' innovations here? Anurag Shivpuri writes for Apple fans, the wait has not been worth it. No extraordinary feature. Why should we upgrade from a four? Nishant jokes. The iPhone 4S is going to sue the iPhone 5 for being the same. While some Apple fans seem contented with what they've been served, my aunt Seni, for example, feels at the same price point, it doesn't look like a bad deal, getting good hardware and software. So today, when all the phone manufacturers are out there in the battlefield with their most formidable players, can this black or white wonder claim the throne of the number one smartphone? Today, yes, but uh, let's see how Nokia prices the Lumia 920. Because that is really a very, very innovative product. Uh, frankly, I don't believe in number one smartphones, uh, though the figures sometimes do show it. Show it. But um, uh, no, I think this is now a wonderful landscape for uh, the competition. I think, and I think that's good for the consumer. Uh, ultimately, I think it's very difficult to put uh, a number one crown on any of these devices. Uh, I think uh, there's, there's actually going to be. Uh, three or four of them at that level because there's very very little difference in uh, in what they do in terms of performance and the features that they have so I would not say it's the number one but it's amongst the top. I think it is one of the number one smartphones today for sure. Um, I just don't think in terms of software uh, features it could be still considered the number one smartphone because in terms of hardware for example Nokia has better cameras right now um, in terms of software, Samsung does have kind of a little edge with their features on the on the Galaxy S3. Calling any phone the number one phone in the world is a bit hard, but uh, I am sure the next generation iPhone is going to take a lot of boxes for quite a few people. Uh, in terms of simplicity and uh, I mean getting the essentials nailed, I think the iPhone might be the number one for quite a few people.